Okay, so what we've done so far is seen how to define a group object in a tensor category where the tensor product is Cartesian, is the categorical product, and I've just shown you a good example of a tensor category, a monoidal category if you like, in which the tensor product is not the categorical product. And we want to be able to define a notion of a, um, of a group object in some appropriate sense in such a thing. Uh, well, you could ask why. Uh, there are several reasons. I mean, you often get functors from categories like the category of sets into linear categories, for instance, like the category of vector spaces. So off the top of my head, you know, I think you've got, uh, if, you, if you start with something like a topological group and then you take the cohomology of that, then that's going to be some sort of tensor functor from some uh, Cartesian category, Cartesian monoidal category into a non-Cartesian category, and you want to look at what the image of that is, and you should it should be some sort of group object. Or another example is you just take the group algebra of a finite group, say. So you start with a finite group, so just something in set, and you take its group algebra, uh, so just the vector space spanned by the elements in that group, and that ends up in the category of vector spaces. But essentially, all the information about the group is contained in this group algebra. So if you're doing representation theory, then you can just look at this manifestation of the group in, in this linear category instead, which is not Cartesian. So that, that's sort of why we want uh, some decent definition in, inside things which are not uh, Cartesian. So let me just uh, expand a little on the Cartesian situation. So here, um, so if we had, so if we have, if you mess with this job, if we have a um, a category monoidal category category C, let me, let me write the monoidal product as a as a as a cross just to emphasise. The fact that the tensor product is a categorical product, where cross is a categorical product, then let me just revisit the statement I made at the end of, of a previous lecture, which was the case where we had set and Cartesian product, and, and the uh, so, so set Cartesian product and the one object set there. Um, then every object in C object X in C is a homonoid in a unique way and every morphism is a homonoid map. Let me just remind you a little bit what a homonoid, what I mean by a homonoid. So a homonoid, um, so what we have is a map delta from x to x cross x, sometimes called the diagonal or coproduct. And uh, an epsilon, let me just write it a little strangely just to distinguish it from the things I've written down there, for the, sec uh, for the moment uh, goes to the unit object. Uh, the unit object for the tensor product, which is going to be the terminal object in the category. So this is the unit. And uh, so these are just the things you get in a monoid but switch around, uh, and consequently they have to satisfy the. Uh, switched round axiom, so that has to be co-associative. So just write down the associativity uh, commuting square for a product and reverse all the arrows. Get it. So what am I saying here? So every object X is a co-monoid, so we have such things, but it's in a unique way. Now because the category is Cartesian, because we've, we've got the categorical product, I proved earlier that every object we have these things. And in fact, that's the only way you could make um, 
an object in such a category into a K-monoid. So although I wrote these in a funny way, in fact, uh, they were the ones uh, that they were supposed to be. So this is, in fact, the diagonal. This is the diagonal map. So the thing that comes from the universal property of the Cartesian product, of the categorical product, and this is just a unique uh, sort of map to the terminal object. So this is what's going on. This is sort of what's special somehow about Cartesian categories, rather uh, Cartesian tensor categories, rather than ordinary uh, run-of-the-mill kind of tensor categories. And uh, we're using this fundamentally in the definition of a group object, although it's sort of under the carpet a little bit. So to do group objects in non-Cartesian uh, tensor categories, we're going to have to put this in by hand. Okay, so. I guess I will just, uh, I'll just write down the definition of a, uh, of a hot file for that. So it's worth ma making a terminological um, comment at this point. So the notion of a monoid in a category versus an algebra in a category. So I guess there's some variation in usage. So. Often, uh, category theorists will call things monoids, which, say, quantum, uh, quantum topologists or whoever might call algebra objects. So it's just because, you know, what, what is your canonical example of a um, monoidal category? So if you sort of take it to be set, um, then a, a set with a associative multiplication and a unit is called a monoid. Um, but if you do the same thing in the category of vector spaces, you take a vector space with a, an associative product on it, you get an algebra. So, so sometimes you, you sort of generalize this to a sort of a general category. You would either have a monoid, you can either call it a monoid or an algebra object. So if I use these, um, use these interchangeably, they mean the same thing, you know, or, or similarly a co-monoid or a co-algebra object. So, in, so it's not. So that's just a terminological issue. So it talks about just a uh, hop algebra, which is going to be, which is going to really be a, a sort of a group, a group object in a sort of in a general category. So it's, it's going to be this plus this plus some axioms. So what is it going to be? So it's going to be, um, well, it's going to be a monoid. So a group is a, a monoid or an algebra object, whichever terminology you want to use. It's also going to be a co-monoid or a co-algebra. Um, co now this, uh, the multiplication and the units of the multiplication are going to be co-monoid maps or co-algebra maps uh, and it's going to have an inverse. So that's basically what a Hopf algebra is. So I guess I will uh, write down the details next time. So maybe I'll, I'll just write down, uh, so Hopf algebra, so this is going to be uh, an algebra, uh, well, it's going to be a co-algebra and an algebra with structure maps being with structure maps, uh, co-algebra maps uh, plus inverse. So it's it's that data. So I'll I'll go into the details.